in a pivotal game against the Washington Wizards. The Toronto Raptors fall just short in overtime. A big dent into their play in hopes. 131-129 is your final. Raptors record now 27-40 and 40 on the year. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Raptors Nightcap. Randy Urban alongside Sherman Hamilton, Paul Jones, and Leo Routens. Sherm, I'll start with you. This was just a weird game for me, just the way that it played out. I thought the Raptors were doing a great job defensively, and then it kind of fell off there at the end. How did you feel watching it? Well, they were doing a great job through the majority of the game. And then I thought, you know, fourth quarter late, Scott Brooks changed that screen and roll and moved it further or higher above the three-point line. And that gave Bradley Beal a full head of steam to attack with the three-point line as an option. Prior to that, I thought the screening action was happening really on the three-point line, and the Raptors were able to crowd the ball handler. So that little bit of space opened up the, hand, the handle for Bradley Beal. And, you know, at the end of the day, the Raptors are not a very good team this season when it's five points or less. So they're four and now, four and 17 in those situations. So you could kind of sense that in these situations, they weren't executing. And I thought that down the stretch, they couldn't get the stops they needed, especially late in the fourth quarter. And then offensively, they found pockets in, in terms of ways to score, but they didn't find a consistency. And they happened to make a three-point shot to send it to overtime. So it was mm -hmm. just a situation where we've seen all season long where they've struggled to close games out that are a close game. And, and it's something that they, they really haven't rectified all season. Yeah, and Jonesy, just in that fourth quarter, I know that it went to overtime with that shot, but you know it wasn't the final minute they were hoping for there. You had the turnover, the missed free throws, the foul on Bradley Beal, a lot of things that just kind of contributed to just a you know an unorthodox finish. Well, I've talked about this before, and to Sherm's point, they had different personnel when they were closing out games. You know, Sherm called it four and seventeen last year. They were number one winning percentage in games, plus or minus three with a minute to go at 17 and six. So they've got different personnel, guys in different roles, trying to close out games. And you look at some of those games, you don't have Van Vliet in some of them. You don't have Lowry in some of them. You don't have Ananobi. So there's kind of a sliding scale on who's on the floor and their experience in those situations as well. That being said, um, I thought Robin Lopez really hurt them tonight. Uh, he hurt them with his big body on the inside scoring. He gave them second and third chance opportunities. When you fouled him, he was making free throws. Um, you know, I, I thought his size really, really helped uh, Washington out tonight. And he was a big part of what, of their win. Leo, what stood out to you? Well, that, that was a big one right there. I mean, come on. If you would have went into this game and saying the X factor is going to be Robin Lopez, He's going to have 24 points and he's going to get to the free throw line 12 times, make 10 of them. You'd say not a chance, right? But that's what, that's what happened. And, and he was, he was tremendous. I mean, he was a bigger factor scoring wise than the entire Raptor bench. And we've seen a few situations like that. Uh, what was it? The Utah game, Jordan Clarkson outscored the entire Raptors bench. Uh, so that that's very difficult, you know, to overcome when one player uh, can do that. And, uh, you know, you also saw what happened. I think it was three minutes to go in the game. The Raptors were playing well. They were kind of following their game plan. And my biggest concern at that point was, okay, you know, you've done a good job with Beal and Westbrook, but where do they shine uh, when the game is coming down to the stretch, right? Mm -hmm. and, and all of a sudden they had drives to the bucket, both of them, that they weren't getting. All of a sudden it opened up. So the Raptors started making mistakes. And, you know, Sherm pointed out some of the adjustments Washington made. Uh, but the Raptors uh, just broke down a few times, right? And that's not the time to break down. That's the time where you got to lock in and really, you know, really continue to do what you're doing and finish the game strong. So uh, it was a great effort hey, for, you know, you're playing a hot team, you're an undermanned team, uh, and you had a chance to win. Uh, unfortunately, you fell short. And sure, no OG. And then late um, or you know, just before tip, basically, we learned that no Kyle today. What did you make of that? And, and then what were some of the bigger performances that impressed, impressed you? Well, I wasn't surprised. I mean, we, we've seen, especially over the last, say, month of the season where guys were just sitting out for rest or for other injuries in, in situations that you would have expected them to play. So it's not a surprise to me. But in terms of, of guys who stood out, I thought Gary Trent Jr., for a guy who missed – the amount of games that he missed, he came in shooting the ball very well. 
very mm-hmm. aggressively and made plays. I thought DeAndre Benberry had some good moments early in the game from the three-point line. But for Washington, I mean, the guys talked about Robin Lopez, but Raul Neto was very good in that third quarter. He was aggressive. He shot the ball well. And in that third quarter, that's where I think Washington made up a lot of ground. They started to get back into the game and got really close. And, and I think he did a great job. But I, I just think that, you know, for the Raptors, Pascal, in terms of scoring the basketball, had a very good stat line. But it was one of those nights where Robin Lopez and that bench for, for the Wizards did a great job. And the Raptors just weren't able to get it done. And they had, in that one possession, they had three clean looks on the three-point line. Mm-hmm. And they couldn't score the basketball. Opportunities abounded for the Raptors. It just was not a night for that shot to go in. Jonesy, regarding Pascal, right? He everybody knows about the sort of tough, tough time in the bubble, and then uh, you know a rocky up and down sort of beginning to this season. But he's really put together, you know, a nice finish here and, and a career high tying forty four. And, and it's the efficiency for me. It was seventeen of twenty eight. I think it was They're just an all around good game offensively for him. I've been impressed with his aggressiveness, especially the last few games. Uh, You know, every time he saw Davis Bertans in front of him, it was like, we're going to the basket. And and to the point where I think Bertans took some frustration fouls out top just to stop the clock so they could get the switches, uh, the the defensive assignments back, and he wasn't switched on to Pascal. I've been uh, impressed with his aggressiveness. Uh, I've been uh, impressed with his heart and, and his ability to say, okay, I'm the main guy. We're going to do all we can to win games. And right now, if, you're, if, you're, if you look at Pascal Siakam, there's no losing. They either win or you chalk it up to experience on, on, on a night like tonight. So uh, I, I've been impressed with his aggressiveness, his assertiveness, uh, his willingness to be a leader and, and, and take it on his shoulders and kind of let the chips fall where they may and say, you know what, I'm learning for the next time I'm in this situation. So, Leo, then what's next for Pascal? Where do you see the, the growth that, that's required to get to the next level? I think for all great players, what do you strive for? It's consistency, right? You want to be you want to be there as close as you can to the same place every time you step on the floor. And we saw, you know, when he's, when he's putting the ball on the floor and he's had a great run as of late, when he's putting the ball on the floor and attacking, he's a different player. I, I think he's a very difficult matchup. I mean, he's got a, he's got a deceptive handle. He's long, he's quick, uh, and, and if the jump shot's, you know, falling, you don't have to be crazy, but if that's falling, he puts a lot of pressure on people trying to guard him, and you look at teams, they throw different people at him, but it's really hard to deal with him, uh, and, and that's what the Raptors not even being at full strength where you can cheat more and try to help, so uh, I think it's just consistency, uh, mm-hmm. finishing games the way you start them, being strong, uh, and then defensively not having any lapses as well. Uh, I think at times he shows he can be a really, really good defender using his length and quickness. At other times, he just kind of kind of disappears uh, and just try to stay in the moment. You know, take a page out of, you know, Fred and Kyle's book where you just realize you got to play a certain way every time you're on the floor. Sure. Let's talk about your boy, Russell Westbrook. Uh, 180 triple doubles in his career. He's now just one shy of Oscar Robertson's uh, all-time mark. What, what do you make of that stat? What do you make of that record? Well, it's ridiculous. It's, it's unbelievably ridiculous that he's doing what he's doing. And, you know, this is a guy who's about to average his fourth season of triple doubles. So yeah. there's no question he's, he's – the stuff he's doing is going to be historic when it's all said and done. However, Russell Westbrook, in key moments in this game, made some bad decisions. And that's kind of his MO at times. And then the foul he took to foul out of the game was just a, I'm mad, I'm upset, I don't like that the officials didn't call the foul, I turned the ball over, I'm taking a foul, and I'm going to hurt my team potentially. Because there were multiple possessions after that where he would have been involved that he couldn't have been involved. So, you know, I I think even though he had a triple-double again, I think the Wizards held on in spite of what Russell Westbrook did in terms of his decision-making. But in terms of this guy as a basketball player and, and what he can do physically, it's absolutely phenomenal. Seven turnovers, Randall, uh, to yeah. Sherm's point. And, and you know, I, I, our, our guy in the bottom corner on my screen, Leo Routens, always says something, and I've always kind of held on to this. A guy like Westbrook does stuff because he can. 
doesn't mean that it's the right thing to do, but he can do it. He, he, he will take a shot. Why? Because I can. I can get my shot. It may not be the best shot for the team. And, and, you know, to Sherm's point, he is a great player. But the question will remain, are you a winning player? Are you making winning plays consistently for your team? And I think that's where the jury is still out on Russ. Yeah, Leo, it's interesting, right? He has 17 rebounds, and I might kind of think back. I'm like, hmm, which one of those was impactful? Or, you know, I think there was one near the end of the game where he kind of came flying in and, and collided with someone. But, like, I don't know. The stats are kind of, at times, empty. Well, hey, yeah, what, what impresses me is, you know, 17 rebounds for a guard is, is crazy. Yeah. And, and what does Nick Nurse want his guys to do? He wants, he wants guys to rebound and go, right? Why? Because you're a faster team, you're a quicker team. So when your guards can rebound, it, it can really change your transition game. And when Russell Westbrook is active on the glass like that and he can bring up yeah. the ball, it changes everything, right? Now, the Raptors did a pretty good job of controlling that. Uh, but, you know, that, that's a great number. But, you know, like, like Paul and, and Sherm say, you know, he's a tremendous athlete. I mean, I, I marvel at how hard he plays. Uh, I love his intensity. He's not out there making friends. He wants to kick your rear end. Uh, yet at the same time, he does some things that you just shake your head. Uh, yeah. And the turnovers, the turnovers can be costly. The, the shot selection can be costly. Uh, the Raptors won the last game they played largely because of decisions he made down the stretch. Um, and, and I think that's what separates. I think we got to be careful when you look at statistics that he's also playing in an era where the statistics are different. Uh, they're much more inflated. And again, I'm not taking anything away from because you're averaging a triple-double. That's pretty impressive. But when you talk about the great guards, great players do things because they're the right things to do. All right, we have to take a break here on Raptors Nightcap. But when we come back, we'll hear from the head coach and the players in the Raptors virtual locker room. <laughs> 